So the aim of this podcast is to give you practice in calculating gradients. So this is a video about the mechanics of calculating the gradients of various scalar fields. So if we have a scalar field, we apply the vector nabla operator to it to calculate the gradient. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six exercises for you to calculate. And note that the sixth one is in two dimensions. All the rest are in three dimensions. So what I would suggest you do is that you pause the video and with pen and paper calculate the answers to these and then on the next slides you can quickly check whether you've got them right or not and if you haven't then you can understand your mistake and come back and try to repeat it later. Okay, so with that I suggest you make a pause. So the first exercise is to calculate the gradient of this scalar field here. We recall the definition of the gradient. We apply this vector operator to the scalar. Here's our scalar and the gradient is in the i direction. We differentiate our field with respect to x. In the j direction we differentiate with respect to y and in the k direction we differentiate with respect to z. So here is our field. It's straightforward to differentiate it. The derivative of this with respect to x, this is x to the 1 multiplied by this, which is treated as a constant in partial differentiation if you're differentiating with respect to x. So we just are left with y squared z cubed, and we write that here. Similarly, in the other directions, when we differentiate this with respect to y, we pull down a factor of 2 in front, we reduce the power by 1, and the other factors multiplying in are treated as constants. So we get 2xyz cubed. And finally here, differentiating this with respect to z, we pull a factor of 3 in front. xy squared is treated as a constant. It's left multiplying everything, and the power 3 is reduced to the power 2. And this is our result for this exercise. Let's now go on to the next solution. So the next exercise is to calculate the gradient of this scalar field here. This is now the sum of two terms, but otherwise it's quite similar to the previous exercise. Again, let's recall the definition of the gradient. And first of all, in the x direction, we just have to differentiate this with respect to x. So here we get a factor of 2x multiplied by yz. And then plus differentiating this with respect to x leaves us with 4z squared. And we need brackets around this because all of this is multiplied by the unit vector i. Similarly, here we differentiate with respect to y. So here there is a factor of y and an x squared z factor. The x squared z factor continues to multiply it. And then when we differentiate this with respect to y, we obtain 0 because there is no y dependence. So we have x squared z from the first term plus 0. And finally, in the z direction, we differentiate all of this with respect to z. Here we're left with x squared y multiplied by 1. And then we say plus, and differentiating this with respect to z, we bring a factor of 2 down. 2 times 4 is 8. The x sits there multiplying everything, and the power 2 is reduced to a power of 1. So we have 8xz. And on the final line, I've just rewritten the whole thing, except I've not put plus zero for obvious reasons. So that's the answer to the second question. Let's go on and look at the third. For the third question, this is our scalar field. This is our definition of the gradient. So in the x direction with the i unit vector, we differentiate all of this with respect to x and we get 4x and here we get 0 and here we get 0 when we differentiate with respect to x. So we're left with a factor of 4x. Here multiplying the j unit vector in the y direction, we differentiate all of this with respect to y. Here we get 0 because there is no y dependence. 
here we get minus 2y and here we get 0. So overall minus 2y which I have written here. Finally in the z direction the k unit vector we differentiate all of this with respect to z we get 0 minus 0 plus 9z squared and that's our final answer for this question. So let's move on to the next question. So this exercise is related to problems that arise in various physical situations. So R is the distance from the origin of a point P with coordinates x, y, z. And this is one of the coordinates in spherical polar coordinates and R can be written as the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So to work out the gradient of that, we differentiate f with respect to x and put in a factor of the i unit vector. So here we have the square root. This means it is all to the power of a half. So we put a power of a half in front and we reduce the power from a half to a half minus one, which is minus a half. So that is one over the square root. Then from the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of the argument of the square root. And if we're differentiating with respect to x, we get two x plus zero plus zero. So overall a factor of two x. And this is the coefficient of the i unit vector. This is the component of the gradient in the i direction. And the other terms in the j direction, so along the y axis, that direction, and along the k axis, so pointing directly upwards, they can be worked out in a similar way, and this is what we obtain. The factors of 2 cancel. So we are left on the bottom with 1 over the square root is a common factor. r is the square root, so 1 over the square root is just a factor of 1 over r. And in the numerator, because the 2 and the half have gone, we are left with x times the unit vector i plus y times the unit vector j plus z times the unit vector k. And that is this position vector of the point P, which I'm going to write as R. So the point P has coordinates x, y, and z, and this vector is, the numerator is the vector R. So we have R divided by R, and that is the vector divided by its magnitude. The vector divided by its magnitude means we have a unit vector and we can write the unit vector as r as a vector with a hat on it to signify it's a unit vector or other notation that's sometimes used is an e with a hat on it to show that this is also a unit vector or sometimes just e with a bar underneath and again the r subscript to show that this is in the direction of the position vector it's pointing out this way. So these are just alternative notations for this result here. If we wanted to think about this, by the way, in terms of dimensional analysis, our scalar field here, if r is a length, has units or has dimensions of length. And if we are differentiating it with respect to x, y and z, we are going to subtract 1. So we're going to go from having dimensions of length to the 1 to having length to the 0. And that's exactly what we get here. We obtain a unit vector with magnitude 1. It does not have a dimension of length. It is dimensionless. But it has a direction. It is pointing along this vector. So with that, I'll stop and go on to the next exercise. The next exercise is something very similar and something which actually occurs in many scientific applications. So the scalar field is 1 over r, where r is again the distance um, from the origin to the point with coordinates x, y and z. 
This is our definition of the gradient. Again, we will use the chain rule. And what I'm going to do now is to point out that this is symmetric under exchanging x and y, or x and z, or y and z. So all I'm going to do is calculate one of the components, and then by symmetry I'm going to be able to just write these two down. And if you're not confident with this, you can calculate these separately and see how, what you get, and you will see that you obtain what I write down. So we're going to need the derivative of f with respect to x. f is 1 over r, so if we differentiate that, we're going to get minus 1 over r squared. And from the chain rule, we will multiply that by the derivative of r with respect to x. We worked that out in the previous exercise. So if you remember, this is all to the power of a half. So we bring a factor of a half in front. Then we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of minus a half, which means 1 over the square root, so 1 over r. And then we multiply, again from the chain rule, by the derivative of the argument of the root. And if we're differentiating with respect to x, we get 2x plus 0 plus 0, so just 2x. The 2 and the half will cancel, and we're going to get 1 minus 1 over r squared times 1 over r is 1 over r cubed, and a factor of x in the numerator. And this is our result for df dx. And as I argued a moment ago, therefore by symmetry, we can write df, so I'll correct this, df dy is minus y over r cubed. If this df dx is minus x over r cubed, df dy is minus y over r cubed, and df dz is minus z over r cubed. And if you're not confident with this, calculate them and you should get these results and understand the symmetry better. So now, we take this result, this result, and this result, substitute them back in, and this is our result for the gradient. But we can write this slightly more nicely. We can recognize there's a common factor of r cubed everywhere that we can put on the bottom. There's a common minus sign we can put out front. And then we would have xi plus yj plus zk. And from the previous exercise, we recognize that this is the position vector r. So we have minus the vector r over r cubed. And one of these powers of r, I can divide into this to give me a unit vector in the r direction. So we can have minus the unit vector of r, divided now not by r cubed, but by r squared. And alternative notation, I can write this as minus, and then e with an r subscript as the unit vector in the r direction, again divided by r squared. This is just different notation for this unit vector. So this is our result for this exercise, and with this I'll move on to the next one. Okay, so with the final exercise, we're going to work in two dimensions, and again we're going to use a scalar field which has actually got scientific use in two dimensions, which is the logarithm of the square root of x squared plus y squared. In two dimensions, the gradient looks just as before, except we don't have the third term for the extra dimension. Before we calculate these derivatives, it's helpful to think about the logarithm and realize that we can use the rules for logs to rewrite it in a way that will make our work a little easier. So this means the logarithm of x squared plus y squared to the power of a half, and from the rules for logs we can pull the power of a half in front, and rewrite this as a half logarithm of x squared plus y squared. So now let's differentiate it with respect to x to calculate this coefficient here. The half sits out front. When we differentiate it, we're going to have from the chain rule 1 over the argument of the logarithm, so that's 1 over x squared plus y squared, times the derivative of the argument of the logarithm with respect to x, and that's going to give us 2x plus 0. So the 2 and the half will cancel. We will have x over x squared plus y squared. And 
in polar coordinates in two dimensions, x squared plus y squared is r squared, the difference of the point, sorry, the distance of the point from the origin. So we have x over r squared. By symmetry, we can write df dy as y over r squared. And if you're not confident about that, I encourage you to calculate it and see that you get that. And that will help you to better understand the symmetry. So now we take these two results and we put them into our definition of the gradient in two dimensions. And we obtain that the gradient of the logarithm of the square root of x squared plus y squared is x over r squared times the unit vector in the x direction plus y over r squared times the unit vector in the y direction. So there is a common factor of r squared and we recognize that in the numerator xi plus yj is the vector r in the direction of the position of the point r. So we have r over r squared and we can take one of these factors of r, the magnitude of this distance so the magnitude of the vector r, and divide it into that and get a unit vector um, r hat over 1 power of r. And an alternative way of writing that unit vector is a vector e sub r to show it's the unit vector in the r direction. So these two are just a matter of notation. And this is the vector r over r squared, but these are unit vectors over r. And again, if we think about the dimensional analysis of this problem, our problem here, what we're starting with, is actually dimensionless. If you differentiate it once, as you do in the gradient, we should get something with dimension 1 over a length. And that is exactly what we see here. Something dimensionless, a unit vector over a length. Or here... A length a vector with dimension 1 divided by 2 powers of r so overall again 1 over a length with that I will stop this podcast